Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Tint Cultural Week. I'm very excited tonight to launch something that is very dear to our heart, which is called Tina. Tina in my language, which is Kosa, means us. And this is a queer love podcast where we believe it is important to showcase positive queer love stories for everybody in terms of representation and to also just learn about ourselves and each other and how we can show up for each other in relationships and be healthy and not toxic to each other. So for tonight, I would love, I'm very, very honored and super excited to have one of my favorite couples and who have coined the DZs. I love saying that. <laughs> um, I just feel like I just need to give you guys a bit of background and also a fangirl moment. Ten Cultural Week was created as a pride celebration alternative. And tonight we have an icon in our community, which is Dr. Bev Dizzi, who I, would, I will let them introduce themselves, but I think it's something that I just want to say thank you to you. We are here today because of people like you. You have done such amazing and incredible work for us, and it is an honor to be able to open such a beautiful podcast with you. Yeah, so thank you for the invitation, and um, thank you for the space. Thank you for Tint Culture. Yeah, do you want to say something? What, what do I need to say? <laughs> just to introduce well, myself. Yes, my <laughs> next thing was going to be, please can you guys introduce yourselves? Yeah, just uh, give us your bio. I, th I prefer okay. people to introduce themselves than okay. for me to do it. Guys, first of all, my <laughs> wife is the one that's normally in the spotlight. <laughs> this is very, very out of my comfort zone, but we are here. You're this is what that. happens when you marry an icon, I guess. <laughs> 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 uh, my name is Nicole. Um, I am, as I said, Bev's wife. We had our one year anniversary on the 10th of September. Well, we'll tell you more about that, but we had many anniversaries actually in the past um, two months or so. Um, I'm from Cape Town originally, moved to Johannesburg for love. Can you believe it? Packed up my life um, and literally brought my car. There's a CA number plate car somewhere around here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. I moved for love. That's amazing. Yeah. Welcome, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bev, please introduce I'm yourself. Bev. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm a filmmaker. Um, from here, I'm from Joburg. I'm an activist. I'm an artist. Um, yeah, I'm a change agent. And what else do I say? I am from here, and my wife moved, and now we kind of want to be living both in Cape Town and Joburg, because, yeah. Can I'm liking you? Cape Town all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh, because <laughs> of Nicole? Well, I mean, you know when you know somebody you love in a place, the place that bred the person you love, you end up... Liking the place too. You end up seeing the place differently. Yes. I think that's what it is. Okay. And so now I'm seeing the place differently. Okay. Yeah. I think I would like to start with, how did you guys meet? Do you want to take it? Well, okay. <laughs> um, for two old fogies. For two old fogies, we actually met online. Uh, believe it or not, uh, we met on Twitter and it was such a, it was very, it sort of, you know, you follow people and I was like, shit, when Bev first followed me back, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> Bev did see followed me back, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had a fangirl moment, of course I did. We all do. Yeah, <laughs> every day. Um, <laughs> And we started talking, and I really, we started talking about quitting smoking. I remember that was like the, the one thing that got us together was I was trying to quit, and she had already quit, and she was giving me tips, and then she got in the DMs there talking about, telling me how I can, you know, giving me tips on how I can stop smoking. We also, <laughs> we also started speaking a lot about um, growing cannabis, because we both do. Um, so yeah, that's where we connected, and started talking via the Twitter DMs. Ah, so the DMs work. The DMs work, guys. Uh, people go, hi. <laughs> what the hell is that? Exactly. <laughs> what is it? Like what? <laughs> hi. Hi, Bo. You want to say something? Say hello. This is who I am. This is my name. But you know what? Actually, it was, we'd known each other 
a while longer before then because we've got like a lot of mutual friends, okay. um, both online but also in real life. Um, Nicole is an activist, has been working in the space um, from, from Cape Town. I've been working in this space, so we've got quite a few people in common. So we were chatting a lot before we even did the DMs. Okay. Yeah. So when, when did you guys realize that, okay, this is no longer just chatting, it's now becoming something? When did you guys fall in love? What was the process? Was this all happening on Twitter? I think simple. We just couldn't stop talking to one another. Like, it became daily. Um, by the time we got to the WhatsApp and the video calls, I shame it was every day. Um, I would wake up and, hey, good morning, good morning. And I'd be making my coffee and there's Nicole. Eventually my mom is visiting and like hanging out and my mom's like, no, who's this? <laughs> What's going on? I was like, hey, Nicole, hello, Nicole, every day. It became, hello, Nicole, what are you having for lunch? Oh, and then Nicole would tell us what she's cooking. And I'd be like, oh, this is what I'm making. Oh, I'm doing the garden. Bring the camera with me. Like, we just couldn't stop talking. I think it became quite obvious very, very quickly when we just couldn't stop talking. And it, it, was, a, it was a beautiful long distance. And I think I really, it felt like a, like a, old-fashioned courtship because you know in in today's fast life people are meeting and then immediately it's a very sexual thing nice. with us it was very very slow there was a there was it was friendship in the beginning we started to get to know each other and and really understand how the other one thinks and so on and so it was about four months of long distance before we actually met four or five months maybe more um, of long distance, which was really beautiful because you really get to know someone, you know, without the physical aspect, but we get to see each other and talk all the time. Um, so by the time that we actually met, it was, uh, it was love. It when we, when I picked her up at the airport in Cape Town, you like, this is my I was like, forever and ever, amen, <laughs> like it's done. Tungisani. <laughs> I think that's what I tweeted on day one, Tungisani, <laughs> and I meant it. Yeah. Okay, so who proposed? When did you get married? Please take us through that whole story. <laughs> <laughs> so we had conversations. You know how people like go to a public space and like do a whole hoo-ha, but they had not yet had a conversation and then all of a sudden somebody goes, no. <laughs> Public proposals. We, 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 we had conversation. I said, would you, would, would you do it if, you know, I would. She's like, I would. So we kind of sussed it out. We knew that we would say yes. Um, and so by the time the proposal happened, I, it, it was, I didn't even intend to. I know. Right? Yeah. Um, her friends were over from Cape Town for the first time. We were chilling on the balcony. And my sister, my friends, everybody was there. And we were a little tipsy. The sun was setting. It was a beautiful day. And I was like, Mara, babe, do you want to do this life thing with me? Um. <laughs> I mean, it was cheesier than that. <laughs> but for the sake of, you know. Mm. Of the audience. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to sing, sorry. Your smile was just captivating. Um, no, <laughs> that was so cheesy. Um, but I for, what I loved about it was, I said to baby, I wasn't really keen on getting married. Um, but when she said that to me, when we had the conversation, I said, I would marry you. Like, not anybody else. Like, there's, there's no one that has ever, ever crossed my mind. I would marry you. And that, for me, was like, made, made me understand that this is for sure the person. Because I was, I didn't doubt it in that moment. Why would you... So in that moment, right, what, what about Bev made you be like, I don't, I'm not really about marriage, but you I would marry? I'd never, <clears throat> I'd never felt so safe with anybody in my whole life. And you know, I was, I was sure, and, and not just sure for, like, you know, that Bev is the one, but she made me feel so secure and safe and sure of like, I could count on her in every way we could count on each other. We were, it, it felt, I felt held. Um, and 
I'm definitely not going to cry because I, I do cry <laughs> quite easily. It's okay. it's cry. But it's a, it's very emotional because you know when you go through your life and you really just <clears throat> have had relationships that have left you wanting a lot of the time and really unfulfilling relationships a lot of the time and and sometimes you sort of got to just fight your way through those kinds of things to get to a place where you know exactly what you want and you know what you want from another person and how what kind of life you want to build and for me when everything aligned with us the way that we are the way that we want to live our lives the future that we both want it's very aligned and for me that was the biggest thing it was just everything fell into place really beautifully mm -hmm. yeah. we also got this thing where we get into relationships and sometimes because we are queer we think we 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 get each other and then we we don't communicate much People don't communicate much. I found that for the first time in my life, I'm communicating. And I feel like I am being heard. And that was a thing for me, to be heard. Um, to not be gaslit, to not be... I don't know, my feelings are valid, no matter what they are. And I've never felt safe enough to, to, to say that or to express myself. And here I was with somebody who was just hearing me. I think that made all the difference. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it was a feeling of safety. Yeah. More than anything, I knew I was safe. So I have a question based on that. You both have mentioned safety. So what I want to find out from you guys is how do you hold space for each other? Um, there's this person that we listen to um, called Abraham, who, who, who did an interview. No, but hold on. Okay. I like I like this interview. Um, in her marriage, she she said something like, "People expect that you'll have a fifty-fifty in a relationship, but in actual fact, we both carry and we both bring all all sorts of things. And when you're coming from work or from where, wherever you're coming from, or you just wake up and today you are on twenty. If you, we communicate that, babe, today I'm on 20. And if you are on 80, you know, Nicole would say, I got you. And sometimes we are on 50-50 and we got each other and it's a great day. And sometimes it's 90-10, you know. And when I see that my wife is not okay and I'm in a better space, I got her. Um, and vice versa. But you can't just assume it also. We communicate it. Are you okay? What's happening today? And we, 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 we have to communicate it. We, we learned not to assume. Because that also builds all kinds of things where you have conversations with yourself in your head and you're like, did I do something? We do that a lot in our relationships, you know? Um, and I've learned to not assume. Yeah. Okay. So I, I feel like that's how we hold space for one another, is being aware that... You know, we're not going to have good days every day, and some days are better than others, but if, you, if you're not in a good space, I got you, and vice versa. Yeah. And knowing that, knowing that for sure, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Same. Same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, when I spoke to you guys uh, yesterday, uh, you guys mentioned, I'm quite interested in your guys, uh, the weddings in, in themselves, because oh, yeah. oh, yeah. they were different processes. Yeah. Would you mind sharing that with us? I love the way you said that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, people always ask us, um, you know, are we, is it different now that, you know, be, from dating someone versus being married? And there's a huge difference. And it's not just, you know, the fact that now we are contracted by law, <laughs> that we are each other's spouses, because we did, we signed contracts and... So we are bound in that way, legally. Um, but we, we actually had four weddings. <laughs> it was a bit of a, uh, yeah. Um, we did, Bev's, Bev's aunt um, is a, a woman of the cloth. So she's a minister and she did a, a ceremony. So we say we, we got married in front of God. We got married in front of our ancestors because we also did a cultural ceremony, a traditional ceremony. Um, and we also got married in front of the law because we did an actual signing. 
and then we had another marriage in front of our friends and family. That was sort of, you know, the big one. Um, and so everybody in our lives, our ancestors, God, we have sworn to be together and to commit to each other um, in front of all these people. And these people bore witness and these entities bore witness. And so... You're in. Yeah, we're deep, like we deep, yeah, deep in within <laughs> this marriage. There's no going back. Uh, I'd love to know from you guys what is it like? Because um, it's my first time actually speaking to, um, uh, if I'm allowed to, to call you a same-sex couple mm -hmm. or same-sex married couple. Mm -hmm. What is it like legally? Like, what's the process like? If you can share that with us, because I've never spoken to anybody about that. Mm. Because um, in your four marriages, one of it was, le was yeah, yeah, legal. Was, yeah. Yes. Look, we can't, We got to somebody who does this for a, you know, as part of their life. Who who does a interdenominational type ceremony and then makes you sign and then like you know takes your um, fingerprints and your ID numbers and lodges that at the magistrate. So it's like home affairs without us actually okay. going into home affairs. Okay. Yeah, um, so that spared us from that whole once a week Thursday business um, because a lot of people, I'd, for a long time, I didn't know that of, o officiates, what do they call them? Officials who officiate the ceremony can say no. And so, okay. uh, well, um, um, conscientious objectors, people who say, I, you know, this is, against my religious or cultural beliefs, they have a right to not marry you. And so it got to a point where Joburg Magistrate only married queer couples on a Thursday. Oh. Because the Thursday was the only day that, that you know, one or two of the officials would marry queer folk. Wow. Um, so we kind of avoided that completely by finding somebody who does this, who, who officiates ceremonies. We made sure that she was cool with us being a queer couple, and she was great, um, and did like a really beautiful inter interdenominational kind of small ceremony. Non-denomination. Non-denomination, what did I say? Inter. inter. Okay. <laughs> um, Non-denominational ceremony before all the signatures in front of like two of our closest people, and that was the official part of it. Um, which was really, really cool to do. Oh, we also did a prenup. So there was a oh, so, oh, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, yeah. We also did a prenup, which is um, <laughs> a prenuptial contract. Yes, we did. It was a, I mean, I they suppose. The ANC and something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anti nuptial contract, Anti -nuptial. yeah. Um, I was going to say the, the non denominational. Um, facilitator, officiator, woman, actually gave us such beautiful pearls of wisdom in her sermon. I suppose sermon is the right word. I'm not sure what to use. But the thing that she told us was, when you have arguments or disagreements, forgive each other quickly. Don't sit with it for long. And actually, to this day, I still think that, like, if, we, if I'm really angry, you know, when you're so angry and you're just like... I'm not going to talk to you for the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think that, I think about those words that she said, forgive each other quickly. And on, honestly, like my heart softens immediately. And I'm like, oh, let's talk this out right now. Like, like let's have a conversation. Um, she was great. I can give anyone her number. If anyone meets someone over there in a few months. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my question, based on exactly what you were saying now, what are some of your conflict resolution tips or methods that you, or tools that you use in your marriage? Do you have like, specific tools? Ish. Holding up a toolbox. We've got a toolbox. What's in the we toolbox? Do. Uh, I think that first one is the, the take a breath. For me, it's breathe, 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 breathe. Okay, so you know, many of us grow up in homes where you are, the minute you express a dissatisfaction about something, it's almost like you are you are, you are accusing, it's an indictment on somebody. When somebody says, I didn't like how you did X, Y, Z, it translates to you're a horrible person. And so you end up, I grew up not being able to express when I'm unhappy or something. Um, what's in the toolbox now for me is being able to gently figure out how to say 
babe, I wasn't happy with this, without it being an accusation. And being able to also handle when she says, babe, I wasn't happy about this. It doesn't mean I'm a horrible person. It just means there was something that I was uncomfortable. That, that was a big learn, learning for me, a very big one. And then Nicole wants to solve things immediately. I am that person that will process it for a day, sometimes two. I shame, I don't have a chance, you know? <laughs> now I ask, now I say, okay, babe, I need a bit of time, yeah. you know? And, and now you're also patient to kind of go, okay, but we need to like resolve this. We, we don't, we don't, you know? And me, I'm a day, Nicole is immediate, so now we're finding the middle ground for each other. I think it's like being able to just take a breath and step back. Um, it's something we're learning. It's, it's, not, it's not something that was immediate. No, not at all. And I think with, with the, when you have difficult conversations, the more frequently you have them, the easier life becomes. It really, it's like, you know, it's very uncomfortable in the beginning, and especially in the beginning, because, you know, I want this person to love me forever. Now I'm going to tell them I don't like the way they do whatever, you know, it's, or whatever, it does feel like a criticism. Um, but creating that safe space where we can have those difficult conversations and that, you know, things can get, uh, we can, it, it can get ugly, and I don't mean ugly as in, in any way fighting ugly, but, you know, we can get to the ugliness of whatever it is that we're trying to grapple with, and it's okay. And, um, and to show each other compassion in those moments, um, I think that's also something that, you know, when we're having a disagreement, and I know it's such a silly thing, but we hold hands, mm -hmm. because just having that connection, because you can't be mean to somebody that you love if you're holding their hand and you're holding that intimate space with them, you know, um, or say something that you might regret or something that, yeah, that you can't take back. That we, that's things you can't take back. Yeah, we make is, sure. That reminds me of that saying, what bring kindness into the room? Yes. yes. Yeah. Invite, kind yeah. invite, kind invite kindness yeah. into the room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, do you guys, I don't know if you guys have a definition, but I would like to ask, what's, the, what's your guys' definition of your own marriage? Because I feel like everybody has their own interpretation of, what? of your marriage, of your partnership, of your union. Do you have a definition for it? How do you relationship? I don't know what you mean. Huh? Yesterday, actually, you would... I, I mean, I think this is what you mean. I don't know. But... Um, <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, yesterday, we were talking about gender roles. And I was like, it's ridiculous how Bevan, I just play into these ridiculous gender roles. And it's so unintentional. It's honestly just our interests as they stand. I am into cooking, and I love cooking amazing food and, like, really complicated meals. And I, I am a... I am a uh, Home cook, I want to go on MasterChef, like those you vibes, right? I, I promise you, like, I'm... And Bev's interest is woodwork and, like, yes. tending the garden and creating... Like, the roles, the gender roles, it's ridiculous how we play into them, but it just is us, you know? This is the, the really how we are, so it's... <laughs> She's butch. <laughs> I am the femme in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just in J. So while you see me with my act, and I've got my drill in my hand, and she's cooking, just so you know, I like I like our queerness yeah. because queerness actually does mean fuck shit up. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like we don't exactly. have to be conventional. Yes. And finding somebody, I've been in relationships with pillow princesses, and I look at her and I go. Mm -hmm. What is it? Like, what am, what am I supposed to do? I mean, not that... Okay, I don't mean I don't know what... <laughs> I just mean that I am... <laughs> All right, we shall leave... Shall we leave it there? <laughs> You're kidding yourself? <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I like the fact that we can be ourselves in all sorts of ways. And yeah. while we may be seen in very conventional ways, we are actually not. So that's your that's, definition. That's then. actually, we, we're oh, very... Yeah. What is that? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. That was the answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question specific for Nicole. Hey. Um, don't worry, it's nothing okay. bad. 
I just want to find out from you because we t you touched on it earlier on. What's it like being married to somebody that is like an icon and a public fig figure? And I know you also in the activism space, yeah. but Bev has been in the limelight basically your whole adult life, right, Bev? Yeah. Yeah. So what's that like for you? Um, I can imagine it's probably overwhelming. You know, I. I don't mind it. I, I I like being the wind beneath the wings. Of nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. but, but I I do love being like a, a support person um, for Bev, and I know that because look, I think my wife's work is very important. I think that she is one of the most incredible human beings. Besides all of that, the work that she's been doing and pouring herself into from the time she was 17 years old is remarkable. Um, and while, I mean, obviously, I have my own ambitions and my own, like, you know, things that I do, um, I love being a supportive wife. And, you know, that's another gender role just by looking at me, right? But I love, I like, I would... We were talking also about, you know, when women are obligated to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to cook breakfast for their husbands or whatever and put in lunch and all of those things. Like, I do it with because I want to uh, make sure that, you know, she has a great breakfast before she gets on a flight or she's going somewhere um, and that she has packed her charger and, you know, reminder to do this and that and do you have your passport kind of thing. I love being that wife and I'm completely okay with being like that supportive person with her. Um, with Bev being a public figure, it is a little bit difficult because I honestly sometimes just want to fight people. Like, you know, you know, Get away. You, like, yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, like, in terms of people are mean sometimes and people say things and people are unkind. Um, and I am a, a very much a, you know, Puma Silwe, I'm there. <laughs> like, I'm coming, I'm coming, like, I'm going to fight um, and stand up for my people. And so. I do feel very protective of her because even though she's a public person, she's very, very soft. And like, I, I do feel like I need to protect her sometimes, um, which I'm also so, okay so to do. Butch, then, as yeah, no, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, what was incredible for me is meeting someone who's so comfortable and confident in themselves that I did not feel like I need to dim my light for you to shine. Mm -hmm. that, that was the most remarkable thing for me because I think my past, you know, I kind of conditioned myself that when I'm with someone, especially in a public space, I try to shrink myself because otherwise I would overshadow. And that became a thing where, you know, I'd step back and I am with someone who is strong and confident and comfortable, who you know who you are and your own value and what you bring. So like the celebrity, I'm not a celebrity when I'm with you, that it's a weird thing. You know, even when you ask the question, that whole icon thing, it's a, it's a bit of a weird thing. I'm just me, sure. you know, and me just being me with someone who just sees me and sees my work as important, but also just sees me has been has been really incredible that I shine, you shine. Mm. One doesn't have to dim in order for the one to shine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love that. I love that for you guys. I, I love it for me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, are some of the, what are some of the healthy traits of your relationship that you can share with us? Sure. Talk. Okay. Talk. Cliche, I know, but there we talk, eh? Yeah, we talk. Yeah, we unpack, Shem. <laughs> they say we, they say us in like, especially the lesbian relationships, we talk shit to death. But we talk. But but also people talk, and it's not productive. Or it's not conducive. We talk productive. Um, how else can I say that? You might have a better way of saying that because we 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 talk to a to a point where. You are, you are satisfied that you are heard. You know, uh, we talk. You're, when the sex is not good, we talk. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things we don't say in, in generally in relationships. You kind of go, yo, 
Hey, guess. <laughs> and you go Asian and you move on. You know, we talk. We say, you, okay, where were you? You know? Oh. Like, because we, we're human. We, we go through phases. We go through things. Um, and I think for me, that was, that is probably one of the most important things is we talk. Um, and also talk about things that we like and things that we enjoy, um, sexually and otherwise. You know, I, I like it when you do this. I like it when you wake up and make me a cup of coffee. I like it when you run my bath. I you know, the kinds of things, like those kinds of things. Um, and it, it's, it's lovely to also just be guided in terms of how we show up for each other and and what what is fulfilling it's those love languages things i don't always believe in them but you know there's value in it i think one of bev's love languages is acts of service well she is in how do i say she services me that doesn't sound right but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way that she shows love is through doing acts of service. Guys. Okay, we get you. We're with you. But the, those kinds of things. So it's, I think that's Act what... Service well. No lies, though. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you guys maintain or uphold each other's trust in the, rela in the relationship? We talk. <laughs> I think for me, something that is important to me is that when you say you're going to do something, I, I need you to do it. That is how I learn to trust people, right? So if I know, if you, if you feel like it's something that you can't do or something that you might not be able to do, rather don't promise that you're going to do that thing. Like, be a person of your word. For me, that is what builds trust. And... It's something that we've sort of worked on, the both of us, saying, you know, that, that your word is bond and that if I say I'm going to do this thing, either I do it or I say I'm not going to be able to do it. And I think that's really important. Um, certainly, that is, 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 it goes a long way for, for trust, for me. Yeah. I think one of the first things you said to me was, thank you for being who you said you were. Oh, Wow. And I said the same. Is, is it, yeah, show, yeah, showing up authentically, I think. Yeah. Um, with all the, the yeah. negative stuff, in, in, all, the, like, you know, all our hurts and our traumas and the things that, we, that are ugly and that are not beautiful to... to it's, it's certainly things that could make someone fall out of love with someone or, you know... And I think that it's important for us to sort of show up even in those spaces for each other and hold space for that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that is what makes me believe that this is, um, is something that I know is going to be for the rest of my life because in all the ugliness and all the things that happen, I still choose her every day. You know, I wake up every day and I'm still choosing you. Yeah. But yeah. I have a question. Well, I have lots of questions. What does it mean, like, because you spoke about showing up authentically in your relationship. What does it mean for you guys to be authentic to yourselves and in the relation and within the relationship itself? So when when I when we met, um, I was in a very vulnerable place. I was going through a lot, um, and I kind of neglected myself for a long while, and I'd shrunk. I'd, I was a shadow of myself. I think when we met. Um, I'd also been physically very sick, but been kind of, you know, putting up a brave front. Um, and for the serendipity of it for me is that I, I was able to open up and talk about that right up front, that I'm not, that all my, the best way to say it is that I think Nicole met me for me at my not so strongest um, a lot of my ugly was hanging out, and she loved me anyway. I, I feel like I presented myself as myself in that time. Um, and in the process, her seeing me and seeing everything else about me helped me to build myself back into my own beauty. 
I, I think we do that for each other quite a lot. Um, and, and in my being raw and vulnerable, you then came out in your raw and vulnerable self too. And, and that was the authenticity. We, we met each other from in that kind of space where we were able to be very, very vulnerable with one another, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I completely agree. And I think for me, the authenticity comes from, I don't have to hide how I'm feeling yeah. on a day when I'm not feeling liquor. I don't have to, you know, pretend to be all happy if I'm not feeling happy. And so wherever I am at, I am accepted and I'm loved and I'm held wherever it is that I find myself, and the same with her. Um, and I, I really, yeah, I, for me, that's, that's what it is. Being able, to, being authentic in a relationship is being able to show up exactly how you are. I was saying, you know, I love being by myself. I was single for three years before I met Bev, and I lived alone with my cats in Cape Town. I had a fantastic solitude existence <laughs> and I, I don't want to say I'd given up on finding love I don't think that I had but I I, re, I didn't seek it out so urgently anymore I think I'd given up on like you know urgently finding someone I went off the dating apps I was just like done with all of that stuff and living the solitude this life of solitude with friends and family obviously um, and I love being alone so coming to Johannesburg and living with Bev and now having like another whole human being in my space all the time um, <laughs> was, was challenging. Um, but what I love about our relationship is that next to being all by myself, she's the closest thing to that feeling of like being completely free. You know when you're completely free and you're alone at home, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can walk around naked and fart in the kitchen, whatever the hell you're don't doing, fart. like, <laughs> you, can do everything, just fart. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, you know, and there's a comfortability with like just being completely free by yourself, and the fact that she and I can do that, a lot of that stuff, <laughs> together, and be completely free and comfortable, and safe, and yeah, I, that's what I love that about us, actually. Okay. How do you guys maintain your indiv indiv your word individualism or individual individuality in the relationship? Because I can see you guys are quite close, and uh, in the like in the way that you speak about each other, you're around each other a lot. How do you still remain Bev and Nicole? We do a lot of our own individual things individually. <laughs> like even even while living together, sometimes we would spend like most of the thing. day apart just because either you're focused on work or you're focused on and I'm focused on whatever DIY project I'm, I'm doing in the backyard or it's you like, know what they call in Montessori parallel play or something like that and um, with kids like where you just sort of both just living and yeah, doing your own thing yeah. and we'll walk past each other and like give a little kiss yeah. and uh, do you want some tea or whatever but we you know spend time doing our own things um, and we do have our own def separate interests yeah. Yeah. yeah you know our groups of friends we, we're very okay to do things separately we love doing things together um, but we're very okay to do things separately to, to, to pursue our own lives we, we're just very comfortable with each other knowing that I, I'm, I know when you're happy I'm happy with whatever you're doing I'm like, and, and also, we are both freelancers, so we both work from home. And so we literally with each other 24-7. It's kind of a lot sometimes. We do have separate bedrooms. Um, so there's a spare bedroom where my bed is that I moved <laughs> in there. And I was like, if I ever need to, you know, space. when we need space from each other. And that's also something that we do. Um, like tonight, I'm just going to go to bed early and I'll see you, you know, tomorrow morning kind of thing. We've done that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's healthy. I don't know where people get this whole idea of like how people should be together. Like we're very, very individual and our individual interests, like, you know, people move in together and now they must watch the same things on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. 
We have our own shows, yeah. you know, and we do our own things. And then once in a while, I say, Mara, baby, you got to watch this. And she's like, hi, <laughs> that's your thing. I'm you know? watching it. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm watching my own thing. And, and, and then we tell each other, like, okay, the plot of this is this. And then we have conversations around stuff. That also, that, that helps because being individuals and living such individual lives sometimes actually means we have a lot to talk about. Okay. Yeah. We're not sitting there frustrated because I'm doing what I don't want to do or whatever. We, yeah. And also, Bev travels a lot. So I'm alone for like chunks of time, which also I like. And it's just me and the dog, and it's like, a, like it's, I love that, actually. I mean, it's not that I love that when you're I not love, there. I also love traveling. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to be like, the, she just came back from Europe and she was gone for, okay, very long. It felt too long. But it was nice for me, it, and I felt like I reconnected with myself in like a lot of ways, and and also just to be alone. I like being alone, and to be alone for like a chunk of time also is nice. There are breaks like that because sometimes I go to Cape Town, and then Bev would just be in Joburg by herself for a bit as well. So, yeah. Okay. My next question. A lot of really, I feel like this is something that affects a lot of relationships or families, but nobody speaks about. How do you guys handle the money conversation? <laughs> I think the very first thing when we had to do the anti-neptual yeah. um, was very interesting because we both had to sit down and say, okay, what our assets, what's our liabilities, what do we have, what do we want to put into the kitty, what are we breaking in half, what are we keeping. So that already kind of began a very sober conversation that then continues. Um, but I think because we've been very easy to talk, we, you know, I say we talk, we do, we do. And, and because we find it so easy to open up and have conversations about, look, sex and money are the hardest conversations to have. Mm -hmm. Once you can have the sex conversation, the money conversation for me became easier. Mm -hmm. You know, because then we're able to say, all right, we both freelance. Um, some months are harder than others, but we still maintain the things that we love to do. Um, but we're able to say, all right, this is what we have for this week, and we prioritize. It's, a, it's become a, a very easy conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I know people find it hard. Mm -hmm. I've... And also just like being a single person and having to pay your own rent all by yourself and buy yourself groceries and buy yourself a chocolate and do you know, everything you just out here paying for by yourself. It's... <laughs> It's horrible. I know this viscerally because I was fucking single for so long. <laughs> like, you know? And so it is nice to be in a space where there's, you know, shared finances and shared responsibility. It's a really nice having, you know, being in a double income household. Um, I must say it has a lot of perks. It's really nice. Um, and the... The thing is, because we're married, like it's you know, it's one thing to be in a fat and sit or you you are living together and you sharing expenses. But because we're married, we sort of also building towards stuff. You know, we need to renovate the house. We need to build a house back home. Like there's a lot of stuff that we that we're planning for. So we need to speak about savings. We need to speak about. You know, and obviously Bev and I have our own money. Like I have my money. She has her money. I get a wife allowance. You know, nice, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> which is nice. Yes, yes. it's very nice. Um, but and and we share expenses, and we, sh we we sort of talk about our savings and plan what we're going to do with with property and all of those kinds of things. And it's it it was it's difficult in the beginning, but as, it's the same thing. It's like the more you do it, the better and easier it becomes to talk about it. And then it's not a thing anymore. Mm. It's not an uncomfortable thing at all. Yeah. I have two more questions for you guys before I open to the audience to ask. Uh, my first question is, how does, because uh, you guys mentioned that you're freelancers and I know that you're activists and you guys do your own thing. Um, how does the work, how does work, the work affect your relationship or just your life in general? Because sometimes it can be a lot. Does it? 
well, I mean, look, sometimes when, yo, the people behind the cameras know, when you work in TV, sometimes it's 20 hour days, and you you are frustrated, you're miserable. It got to a point. I, I think I just finished one production, where Nicole said, "I ca I can't hear about this anymore, Bev. Mm -hmm. Enough now, because you know that's all you talk about because yeah. it consumes you um, working in TV." Um, <laughs> but that's not that's not a negative thing. You didn't say negatively, though, no. right? Yeah. No. I asked how it affected you guys. Yeah, so yeah. But I mean, I think. You know, when you're doing TV work, it, it does consume one. Um, but also, whatever affects you on the outside, you bring it home. Yeah. You know? And I think it's nice because we're both activist e and both creative as well. Um, so it's always nice to have another creative person around to bounce ideas off of. Does this sound okay? Does, you know, does this read okay? Does this look okay? Um, I really like that, actually. And there's also a lot of synergy between, you know, um, sort of, what, not synergy, that's not the right word. It, there's potential for us to create together, yeah. which I'm very excited about. And we have started creating spaces and doing things together. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about sort of expanding on that and creating more spaces and, and creating, yeah. So my last question is literally about that, to ask you about, because I know um, you, have a, you have an event which you launched last month in September, yeah. Please tell us more about the projects that you guys are working on together, individually. This is your moment to put yourselves on. Yay. Yeah. Plug. Yay. <laughs> um, do you want to go? I'm, I'm making a film on mom, on my mom, called Idlet, um, a superstar. Ray's mom was a superstar in the 70s. Um, and worked with some of the big names from Hot Sticks Mabuse to Blondie Makene and all the big, big, big guys um, in the 70s. And I'm making a film, and Nicole is doing the social media on that. Oh, yeah, on the film. On the film, yeah, yeah on, on the Eatlet film. That's, that's the one thing that I'm working on. Um, we've got other projects coming up. I established the Bev Dizzy Foundation last year that we kind of, you know, got stuff lined up on and you do um yeah so i launched uh we launched an event last week last last month in september um it was it's called a queer kink odyssey and it's basically a space you know the idea behind this space was to create a safe environment for queer people to come together and just be free guys there were so many bums like it was just, it was a, f a free, beautiful space where people could just come and learn. It was also part of an educational space and be a little bit freaky and get some spankings and so on. Um, and it was really lovely. It was a beautiful expression of, of our kinkier sides. It was nice. Um, and we do plan to have more. It was really well supported. People loved it. People had a great time. Um, and we plan to have more. And the, the idea also behind the space was to show, you know, the older queer people who we have active sex lives. <laughs> you know, that like in, in this um, youth obsessed culture, I love that phrase, to, you know, create space for older queers to, you know, be free and have a good time and get down and, you know, be open and. Um, and not just older people, a spectrum of people um, was at the event, and that was really lovely. I loved that about the space. And so that's, that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I also, I'm, I'm um, the owner of a company called The Bush Doctor. I do herbal tinctures and medicines and not medicines. Um, essential oil um, items and so on, but I also do edibles and cannabis goodies and all of that. So remember, we were talking about how our one of our first kind of conversations on Twitter was on cannabis. Yes. I'm a grower. I love growing. I I grow in the so backyard. And now the and then yeah. and now I'm like meeting somebody who actually cooks and does like um, all kinds of herbs with with the plant that are not just to smoke and to get high. And, and it was quite, th that, that was amazing. I thought, hi, boy. So now you come to Joburg and now there's a plant, you know? There's like, I grow when you do stuff with it. 
Yeah. yeah. That was a cool synergy. That was cool. I, like, that was great. It was one of the, the very cool things, because when I moved here, I mean, in Cape Town, I was having to purchase the herb, you know, in bulk from, from suppliers. <laughs> uh, um, and when I got here, there was like cupboards and cupboards full of weed that Bev, Bev had, had harvested. It's like I fucking won the jackpot. It was great. I was like, I'm never leaving. <laughs> Uh, please introduce yourself as well, and remember to be kind. If you're not, we're going to switch off your mic. Hey, everybody. My name is Baba Ganoush, Baba and I am Africa's favorite drag queen. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question is, when you get into a, a relationship, when you've had previous relationships before, what are some steps you can take to not carry the trauma of a previous relationship into a new one? Thank you. I don't know if it's if it's possible to not carry it with. I'm sorry to say. I, I think you know what actually. There's sometimes where Bev and I will have a, a disagreement, and clearly my response or her response would be a trauma response, and you can you can clearly see that this person is responding from a place that's not really from what's going on here. Like you know, there's something much deeper. Um, and then we unpack and we talk. And I think the only way to not carry it past a certain point in your next relationship is to thrash it out with the person that you are uh, in a relationship with. Like, they need to meet you where your trauma is and you need to see you in all of that and still love you through it, you know? And we need to do that for each other. <laughs> it's hectic, though. Listen, it's hectic. Because also, coming from being single for three years, I really felt like I had done all this healing. Yeah, I was a healed babes, guys. Yeah, I was healed. I had done all the work. All the work was done. You know. <laughs> and then you get into a relationship and this person's triggering things that you hadn't thought about in 10 years. And you back there, like to that person reacting and responding in the, in the way that you were responding 10 years ago. It's wild. It's a very trippy thing. And so when, once you get into a relationship, you now having to deal with all these triggers again. And I think the key is having someone who is okay to hold you through those spaces. And yeah. I think that's the self-awareness and, and in those moments where I am like triggered and reacting from those spaces of hurt and insecurity, being aware is, is key and, and even when I step back from myself, I go, whoa, but what was that reaction? You need to be aware of it because then that's how we, we begin to move past it. Something that you guys are both looking forward to. In, like either in your individual lives or together as a couple, what is the future? Okay, so be? listen, Botrafield. So Nicole, Nicole, did you see? My so wife's got know. such foresight. My wife bought a plot, like a place in the Western Cape, and now we're gonna go build. And now I am DIY queen, right? I'm like, yay! I love building. I love brick and mortar, mixing cement. I love like woodwork. I got all my tools. I can't way to go build and the idea is um, um, a feminist queer retreat space for all of us you need us you need a break um, to come and spend some time that's kind of the space we're building and oh man that's that's our future I see myself as a very 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 old woman there by the ocean with my spliff and my tools and inviting all these young queer folk who just need space and just being with my wife and getting old while doing some of my work via Zoom. You know, like life, yeah. Jay. That's, that's a beautiful life. That's for me, I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Yeah. 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 We're building this organic space and that's so amazing. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'll come visit. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We're going to have one of these there too. Hi, sorry, do y'all do y'all need an architect because <laughs> I got you. 
<laughs> Let's talk, fam. When you when you said you've got a plot, I was like, Whoop, hold on. <laughs> Building. Yes. yes, please. Let's hit chat. me up. Oh, it's Thelma. Yeah. I'm dormant youth on Instagram. I am a qualified architect. I got so you. I'm really an architect. <laughs> let's let's chat. Please, yeah, yes, yeah. let's chat. Yes, Thomas please. An architect, yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Put yourself on. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Right. Um, and then I think in closing, if nobody else has a question, mm -hmm. what is the message that you'd like to give to the younger queer folk, the younger queer couples, you know, just share some love with us? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so for me, I never thought I'd be married, guys. Like, you know, yeah, I always thought to myself, ah, I'm going to be that activist, you know, that's probably just going to be going around the world until I'm, like, too old to travel, if that's possible. Um, for me, I'd never seen a, a lesbian like myself who was in their 50s, baja life, flourishing, enjoying, you know? Mm. I'd never, there'd never been that for me. So I never saw that for myself. I am now in the space where I'm like, wow, it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's possible, it's possible to, to have joy. It's, it's, it's even revolutionary to be queer and be happy because we're just supposed to die, right? Whether it's in books or films, or we just die. We, we are somebody's handbag, we are somebody's entertainment, and we just die. And we don't die in our sleep also. We die brutal deaths. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me to, to be almost 52 years old, happily married, and, and, and I'm not saying there's no issues, but to be able to be in a space where one can work through whatever their issues are from a place of joy and from a place of hope and a place of love. Ashim, that is everything for me. And if anything, I would like the, the young ones to know that joy is possible. Thank you. That's amazing. Please say something, Nicole. <laughs> um, are you crying? I, no, 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 no. My <laughs> eyelash is sticking. <laughs> um, you know, I, I once went on a random Tinder date with someone and I, you know, said to them, this is the things that I want from in a, in a relationship. These are the things that I want from a, a person to be with and whatever. And this person literally laughed at me like, are you never going to find someone like that? So don't don't lower your standards, is what I'm trying to say. Like, don't compromise on what you want and what you expect out of your relationship. And if it feels like you're compromising too much and it doesn't feel good um, and it doesn't feel enriching, then, you know, try and shift that. But you, you deserve to get in a relationship exactly what it is that you want mm. and what you want out of a relationship. Mm. As long as you're prepared to do the work to be present and be that for the other person as well. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Thank you so much. Do you Thank have you. For anyone? No? You're good? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. We're, don't go. We have speed dating happening in the other room on that side. Uh, Baba Ganoush is our host, and it's going to be fun. Yay. There's food, and there's a bar outside. Thank you for being here. And you'll catch this episode probably next week on our YouTube channel. We'll put it on our socials once it's live. Please follow us. We're at tint underscore ZA. Yeah, let's have a good time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you, my wife. <laughs> I warmed up there in the end.